Here is the Blue Wing Midge. It's an adult midge pattern designed to be fish wet. It's a fly design that exploits two recent scientific discoveries. The first discovery is that midge wings commonly show colored zones that are produced by what are called whips, wing interference patterns. These are the same phenomena that you see on soap bubbles. Whips are widespread across midge families and the color pattern is specific down to the species level. The second discovery, and this is why this fly, fly is designed to be fish wet, is that scientific studies show that fully emerged midge adults are increasingly failing to lift off the stream surface because of man-made and natural surfactants. Here is the video clip of the of bubble lines being generated by a riffle and then moving down the pool. And these are caused by these natural and man-made surfactants. The thing is, is that although we've tried to eliminate man-made for surfactants, they're generally still present in these streams. Well, what the impact is, is that when the midges, like the one you see here, they have mass and they depress the surface film. And when you put a surfactant in there, it breaks down that surface tension and the, the adult pattern, the adult just sinks right back down into the water at a f increasingly frequent rate. This makes for a sunken fly that can be effectively fished because trout would rather fish, feed underwater. And this pattern works very well. Went out on the web and compiled images of blue wing midges, natural ones. And I'm comparing it here to the, the blue wing midge pattern. Uh, you can see here that the, the colors that these we see in the, of the whips, which are the wing interference patterns, range from mostly blues in these cases to some magentas and oranges. And it has to do with the thickness of the clear wing membrane and how the light waves are interacting from the upper and lower surface. Just again, just like a soap bubble. I think you see here that the colors that I'm able to get out of the tinsels I used in the blue wing midge uh, do a pretty good job of emulating the natural blue wing midges. Tying the blue wing midge today, it's a, <clears throat> a sunken midge adult. That is that it's failed to launch, that it, it's fully emerged uh, from the husk and has since then been washed under either by the currents or by the surface tension being reduced. I'm tying it today on my favorite midge hook, which is the 206BL. Um, it's a continuous curve hook, as you can see, and it's a two extra short, which gives it an uh, extra wide gape. Um, which I prefer because I like to get a little bit of meat in these fish when I catch them. Now, <clears throat> so what I do is um, I put the beads on a, a lid here, and I have the hook, hook there, and I grasp the hook in a grasping tweezers. And then I just use the, um, the, the flexibility of that lid to uh, sort of using a tiddlywink sort of style movement, pressure on the side, I get the bead to come on, if I'm lucky. <laughs> and then I gather it on and put it on. Thread I'm using, this is the other, one of the keys to tying um, a small midge is the small thread, which is, this is 20D uh, in black, the nano silk. Uh, I don't want any thread buildup. So I start this thread, a few turns to lock it, and I um, cut it off. Then I use the um, Ligurton uh, silver wire. This is the fine. I also use extra fine as I go to smaller and smaller flies. This would actually qualify for extra fine in a way, but I find that it breaks pretty easy. So I'm stuck back on the fines. Um, I tie it in right behind the bead because I don't, you can tie it back here, but then you end up with an odd lump when you, when you wind forward. So I've gone back to tying it in right behind the eye. And then I come back in a single layer side by side to get me a uniform thread body 
without any of the wire or hook shank thrown through. Showing through. I tie into the bend, and this is an idea that George Anderson had um, to add life to the fly, because as it twists down the stream, it, it looks like the body's wiggling, and uh, it gives the impression of life. Uh, I, I don't know if the fish really need that, but it's kind of a cool idea. Okay, then I wind the thread forward with about three quarter to one millimeter gaps. I don't want to overdo the ribbing either. Um, I'm just trying to give the impression of segmentation, uh, which is common in midge adults. And I also want to add a little weight because I want this to sink under the surface slightly and be drifting along like a drowned adult. Tie it off. Lock it in place, and I build up a slight platform to get the thread base above the level of the wire. And what I'm trying to do is have it so the wire doesn't wedge up the wing. I want the wing to come straight over the back of the shank in a narrow V. Um, I'm using the pearl tinsel from TechStream. It's a translucent um, pearl blue. It's about 0.25 millimeter in width. Um, I, and I love the color. It's what I see in the photos of the midges. This is what the color looks like. And okay, so you, this is one problem of having it on the spools is you get these kink spark, uh, kinked parts. And I just trim those off to get me one straight segment that I'm going to tie in But after I fold it over like this. I pinch it, pinch style add a on top of the hook and I organize it so it's directly over the top of the hook give it a couple turns and fold it back with a, and I lasso it with a couple loose turns and then come forward and get ready for my next piece so the loose, uh, the loose winds around there which are fairly firm but just not tight um, are to lasso the and make it so it stays in a narrow V pattern. Again, I got that kink from the spool. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're going to tie up a bunch of these, you could cut up quite a few pieces, segments of the tinsel, and not mess around. Just have a straight segment ready to go. So I tie in this pearl. Sorry, this is the Hens HS10 Pearl and Small. It's very small, it's about 0.25, it's the smallest I've found. Most of them are wider than this. Again, I do a couple loose turns and firmly pull it back and then tighten up for the whip. Uh, I, I cut these off just a little short of the hook bend because that's what the naturals, the body always seems to stick out a little bit in the coronamids. Um, so that's, the, that's why I trim it there just on top, right where the bend starts. Um, also, the color mix, these, uh, the pearl gives the magenta and orange color, and this gives orange and a blue color to it. And that's the color I generally see, and you saw on those pictures of these uh, colored midwings. So that's, an, that's because of the interference. It gives you specific uh, color schemes, actually, as that scientific paper I mentioned there uh, says. And next, we're going to whip finish. Um, I do a four turn whip finish and then tighten it down and I double it up. But then I don't add cement because the cement just wicks back into the wing and, and wreaks havoc, makes a big hard spot there. And I don't find it's necessary with a double whip finish. I trim it close. And there you have it. You can see that the, it's maintaining a narrow V over the back of the body, the wing. And uh, so there, it looks pretty good. There it is, the blue wing midge, which is a, a really hot fly in the spring and late winter. So I did all this theoretical work, searched the web and found that all out about whips and things, because I was trying to figure out uh, why midges, blue midges worked well. And I came up with that the wing color is what's really going on. 
and uh, it might reflect down on those bubbles, the gas bubbles that form under the shuck, and make a blue body f look looking fly. But I think it's these whips are causing midges to take on a blue color. Anyway, so I did all that theoretical work, and then I fished made up these flies and took them out to fish them for the first time and I was had a really good luck because I fished this one hole on the upper Arkansas that it's an overwintering hole it's very deep and it has a slot at the head of it where all the the foam lines are compressed in and they flow out into the into this pool and the fish just line the bottom uh, below this and on the sides of this slot and wait for the food to come rolling down so I fished this fly, and within, an, I would say, a half hour, I'd caught 12 fish. Uh, and I started, the thing started slowing down again, so I started letting the fly swing at the end of my drift and come up. And that's when they bent, came up and hit the thing so hard, and I strike the opposite way, and it bent the hell out of the hook. And you can see the damage to the to the wire and the uh, the tinsel has been broken off from being chewed on by so many fish. So there it is. This is the first prototype and after it's been fished. The truth is I find that the drifting down the wet variant, even if the fish are taking midges on top of the surface, works very well if you to just keep it shallow and that you can do that with your contact nymphing rig. Just hold it up off and, and drift it to it, lead them to the fish. And so the wet version of this works very well with uh, with uh, fish that are uh, moving or mid column or moving up to the surface and smutting as it's called. But if you want to go dry then here's the dry variant it's just a obviously one done without weight and ribbing and such um and this is the the dry ones are, of course are where we originally saw the the blue wing whips patterns um so it, it this fly does work and uh, if you want to go dry there it is <laughs>